Symbiosis is one of those ecological terms that actually gets used quite a lot outside of the science world, especially when we're talking about two different organisms helping each other out. I mean, that's what symbiosis is, right? Wrong. The actual definition of symbiosis has been a topic of intense debate among scientists in the past, but ecologists generally tend to agree that it refers to any relationship between two unlike organisms. Notice that this definition is actually pretty vague and does not include any description of the kind of relationship between these two organisms. Today, we'll be focusing on the three major kinds of symbiotic interactions, being commensalism, parasitism, and mutualism. Commensalism is a type of symbiotic relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is not impacted in any meaningful way. So it's kind of like a win for one species and a meh for the other. Let's see if we can find an example of commensalism playing out right here in this forest. An example of this type of relationship that I know you've seen before is this animal right here. When a spider builds a web on a plant, the spider gets a benefit because it has structure on which to make its home and capture food. And the plant, on the other hand, is not really harmed at all by the interaction. The second type of symbiotic relationship that we'll talk about in today's video is parasitism. And this, believe it or not, is actually the most common kind of symbiosis that we observe in the natural world. In a parasitic relationship, one of the organisms receives a benefit and the other is harmed by the interaction. So it's a win for one species and an L for the other. Now some really easy examples of parasitism are insects like ticks or mosquitoes. When a mosquito bites you, it gets a delicious meal of your blood and you get an irritating itch. The third and final kind of symbiotic relationship that we'll investigate in this video is mutualism. And this is the kind of symbiotic relationship that most people people think symbiosis actually is. In a mutualistic relationship, both organisms actually receive a benefit, and neither of them are harmed. Now, unfortunately, these kinds of relationships are not very common in nature, so it might be hard for us to head out and observe one, but let's see what we can do. This is totally weird. What we have is an adult spotted salamander, and it looks like there are eggs. Spotted salamanders, what they typically do is migrate down to a breeding pond and deposit an egg mass in the water. For some reason, this female decided to just deposit her eggs, I guess, in the moist soil under this log. Spotted salamander eggs also have something else pretty special going on. And in fact, I would consider it to be one of the most amazing symbiotic relationships in nature. Egg masses of the spotted salamander actually have a mutualistic relationship with a particular species of algae, which is only found associated with spotted salamanders. Now what happens is the algae actually inhabits the egg masses of the spotted salamanders, it provides carbohydrates to the developing embryo, and in exchange, that developing spotted salamander will provide carbon dioxide and nitrogen to the algae. These, as far as we know, are the only animals that are capable of photosynthesis. Even though they can't do it themselves, this unique relationship allows them to get energy even if they are not biologically capable of doing it themselves. Today, we've learned about the three major kinds of symbiotic relationship. Commensalism, parasitism, and mutualism. Each of these interactions and many others are constantly occurring all around us in the natural world. And now that you're able to identify them, I hope you're able to observe our natural systems from a new perspective. If this video helped you understand symbiosis a little bit better, I think you'd also enjoy my ecosystems series, where we go out and visit different ecosystems and learn about what makes them unique. And here's your sneak peek of the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time. But until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.